If you're making one of these 12 unforgivable mistakes in the physical therapy school application, you need to stop this right now. Over the several years of coaching pre-physical therapy students trying to get into physical therapy school, I recognize 12 significant potholes that will end your physical therapy school application. Do not make these mistakes. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top 12 unforgiving mistakes that you can make in your physical therapy school application. And make sure you watch till the end of this video because number 12 is a game changer. I can't wait to share with you guys. Let's get into this, Lego. Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Dr. Lift for Change, Justin Lee, physical therapist, and I am a high performing physical therapy student coach. I help students get accepted into physical therapy school, and once you get in, I help students live abundantly and intentionally through the physical therapy school experience. So if that resonates with you, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel and learn more about me. And if you wanna say hi, please leave a comment. Okay, you guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with number one of the top 12 unforgiving mistakes of your physical therapy school application. And the first one is poor planning. Now, poor planning, I know this sounds very common knowledge, but you will be very surprised at how many students don't actually plan for their entire requirement list. Now, PT school, there's a lot of stuff you gotta do. So if you're not planning ahead on those classes, on those prerequisites, on those letters of recommendations, your essay, your GRE, all those things, you're gonna get caught up near the end and be like so overwhelmed because you're gonna be like, I have so much stuff to do. I don't have that much time. I'm trying to get accepted and apply this cycle. And you're just gonna feel rushed. And I don't know about you, but for me, whenever I feel rushed, I don't perform at my best. When I perform at the highest that I could possibly be, I'm always planning ahead. And I'm sure you guys heard the term or the cliche or this phrase, if you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And this is so true for the physical therapy school application. Please do not fail to plan ahead. I want you to make sure you're uh, organizing your thoughts, organizing your classes and plan ahead. Now, if you wanna learn how to get accepted into PT school in the fastest way possible, I teach you how to plan ahead with your classes. Okay, the next one we're gonna go, number two, we have focusing on the wrong requirement. Now, focusing on the wrong requirement, now this is something that is important because there's so much to do on the list, right? You have your prerequisites, your letters of rec, your personal statement, the yada, 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 yada. But, where should you be focusing your energy, your attention? What holds the most weight? For those of you who don't know, your prerequisite classes, your science classes are gonna hold the heaviest weight in your application. So don't be spending thousands of hours in your observation hours trying to gain experience and neglect your academics, right? If your academics hold the most significance in your application, then why are you wasting your time on other things that are unimportant? Ah, real eye opener for this one, okay? So make sure you're focusing on what holds the most weight in your application. Next, we have only academics. If you're focusing on your academics only, you're making a huge mistake. Physical therapy schools are looking for students that are well-rounded, not just 4.0 student. Imagine this, you have a student that's a 4.0, student that's a 3.5, the 4.0 is not involved in anything, but the 3.5 student has leadership, is involved in community service, is involved with their politics and their the, the government around them. They are helping out other people don't you think that person would be more successful as a physical therapist than someone who has no prior experience and is just book smart? Doesn't make sense. A physical therapist must be well-rounded and if you're just academically smart in that, in that intelligent way, that's a huge mistake. Okay, next, we got taking the GRE lightly. 
Woo! Now the GRE, for those of you who don't know, is required for the PT school application. Now this is something that is overwhelming, something that no student wants to do, but is required. And it actually shows a lot of characteristics of a student depending on the grade that you get. They don't care about like what information is on the GRE, why you need to know analytic analytics, your quantitative, all that stuff. They don't care about like what you're studying. What they care about is, are you putting in the time to prepare for something that you don't want to do, but still perform well? You're going to be in physical therapy school and there are going to be classes or subjects or things that you just don't like. And it's going to be really hard. For me, that was neuro. And I had to survive three whole semesters of neuro. And it was unbelievably the hardest season of my life in PT school. But I remember the times when I was studying for the GRE and I approached this GRE thinking, this is so hard and overwhelming, I can't do this. But I buckled down, got to work, put in the work of learning something that I didn't want to learn, fighting that resistance and still doing well. And same thing happened when I was in neuro. It was so hard, but I pushed through that resistance and then I ended up performing well. So the GRE is actually one of the top most heavily weighed parts of your application and schools are looking at the GRE more and more and more now so just hitting those minimum requirements ain't gonna cut it for you okay next on the list grammatical errors on the personal statement now this is something that's pretty common knowledge right you want to make sure your commas your periods your sentence structures all of that is intact but if you are showing consistent common mistakes, common grammatical errors, common, common uh, sentence structures that are not organized, that tells the PT school uh, uh, admissions who's reading your essay, this person isn't paying attention to detail. And as a physical therapist, as a student in PT school, you need to pay attention to detail. There are so many things that are going to be thrown at you and you need to remember a lot of them. And if you can't even remember to put a comma or a period, that says a lot about you. Next on the list, making sure that you are not leveraging your story is gonna be a huge, big, 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 big mistake. Now notice how I underlined story. Now your story is so unique. Can you say that who you are and your upbringing and everything that you've experienced is totally different than your best friend or someone that you're another applica applicant? You have something very unique to share and you need to highlight that. You need to leverage that, right? If you have struggles, if you've had uh, uh, oppression, if you had different things in your life that caused you to just not flow freely, but then you showed that you overcame that, you showed that you overcame the injustice, you showed that you overcame the unbelief of everyone not believing in you, you need to leverage that story and write that in your personal statement. Spin what the topic is that PTCast gives you and spin it so that your story can emerge and be highlighted. And that same story needs to be represented just as equally and if not more articulated more beautifully in your interview. When they ask you, so why'd you choose physical therapy? Or tell me about yourself. This is when you share your story. Okay. Now, if you want more training on this, I do one-on-one -on -one Zoom interview prep for PT school. And I teach you and I coach you through how to highlight the areas of your story. We talk about different interview questions and how to strategically answer them so you sound most appealing and delicious to the PT schools. So if that interests you, feel free to email me, liftforchange at gmail.com, and I'd love to get in contact with you. All right, next on the list. Pretty obvious, but very important to understand. Minimum work. Now students are always, always, always thinking about how overwhelming this whole process is. And they are most likely not at the highest GPA or the GRE that they want to be. And most students will think about, okay, well the minimum is 3.0. Let me just get a 3.0. Oh, the minimum GRE is a total of 300. Let me just get a 300. 
This minimal work mentality is gonna screw you in the end and it will end your physical therapy school application. I guarantee you students who are applying to PT school are going above and beyond just the minimum requirements. So if you're striving for just that, you already lost my friend. Sorry. Okay, next on the list, not thinking about tuition. PT school is a lot of money, especially if you're going to a private program, which most PT schools are. And if you're trying to get into a public school program, it's super competitive. So if you're not thinking about tuition and you're just like, well, I'm just gonna apply to everywhere, wherever they accept me, that's gonna set you up for failure, my friend. Because when tuition is a lot, you take out a lot of loans, interest accrues, down the road, you'll be paying off loans for 20 plus years. Do you want to be paying off your student loan debt for 20 plus years? Think about that. $100,000 tuition, $50,000 tuition, right? There's a big difference. So you wanna make sure you're always thinking about tuition when you are applying to physical therapy school. Next on the list, we have applying late. Now a lot of programs are rolling admissions. So that means the faster you apply, the better chance that you have. For example, that let's say there's 50 spots available in PT school. If you're one of the first people to apply, it's you with 50 spots available. But then if you apply late and then let's say there's two more spots, it's you versus two more spots competing with thousands of applicants. So your chances are much less. So if PT schools are rolling admissions, you wanna make sure you apply as early as possible. Doesn't mean you have to force yourself to apply on day one as soon as PTCAST opens, but you wanna to try to apply as quickly as you can. Okay, this is also important. If you are not applying to more than three PT school programs, so a mistake is to apply less than three programs, that's, that's hard because you still wanna give yourself the best chance to get accepted. If you put all your eggs in one basket, that is a huge, huge, huge risk. Personally for me, that's what I did. And I took a big risk in doing that, but I knew that Azusa Pacific University was the program that I wanted to get into and I didn't wanna go anywhere else. However, I don't think that was the wisest decision. So I hope you can learn from my mistake and apply to at least three programs. Make sure you look at the requirements. I know they're all different, but it is worth it to give yourself the best chance to set yourself up for success to get accepted into PT school. Networking over academics. Woo! Okay, y'all. This one. Now, those of you who think, oh, it's all about networking. It's all about who you know. Like, I know the dean of the program. I know the admissions chair. Like, I'll be fine. Don't worry. Even though I have a 2.5 GPA, I'll be good. No, you will not. You will absolutely not. Even though your network might be your net worth, right? And you can try to sway and win over all these significant people that you might know. Can they really have the power to get you in like that? No, they cannot. There are so many rules and regulations nowadays that there are pra standard practices that, that, uh, app that the uh, uh, admissions of PT schools are, are working through. And you can't just like get someone from the bottom of the pile to put them to the top. That's just, that's wrong, that's unethical, right? You have to, as an applicant, you can't rely on your networking to get you in. However, if you have a strong application and you want to give yourself that competitive edge, then your networking can definitely boost you up to the top, right? You have a applic application that's pretty good, but if you want to stand out a little bit more, maybe just a name drop from that dean or that person that you know saying to the application, the, uh, the admissions chair saying, hey, you know what, Justin Lee, like I know him personally and he's a pretty cool guy. Or you can ask that person to write you a letter of recommendation. That holds a lot of weight too because it shows you who you are, not just from your personal opinion, but someone else as well, right? So focusing on your network over your academics is a huge mistake. You always want to make sure academically all the requirements, prerequisites, your grades, and your GRE are at the highest they can possibly be. All right. 
Last but not least, y'all, we have the number 12, and I told you that this is this was going to be a game changer. And this is something that a lot of students don't even realize that holds so much importance. And that's gonna be unable to visit campus. Now, when you are visiting campus, there is this power, right? Because number one, you get to feel what it's like. You get to feel what the environment is like. And then number two, you have a chance to visit and talk to the different professors and the faculty and staff to get your name and face recognized. This is so important. And once you make a connection, you get their email and you follow up with them. Ah, woo -hoo -hoo! visit campuses, y'all. So I hope this video helped inspire you to learn from these mistakes and not make them because they can be definitely unforgiving and will end your physical therapy school application. If you like this video, please feel free to give this video a like. Please feel free to share this with any of your classmates or someone who is applying to PT school. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions or if you loved one of these common mistakes. Guys, I'm so stoked to share this video with you and I'm so thankful that you watched this video all the way to the end. If you want to connect more with me, feel free to add me on Instagram or join the Levator Nation Facebook group. And guys, I do have an online course that teaches you everything you need to know to get into PT school. A lot of students have gotten accepted because they've taken this course and learned how to plan ahead and make sure that their application was the strongest it can be. If you have any questions about that course, I do have it in the description below. Thank you everyone for watching. Stay lifting, stay aloha. God bless. Have a great one, you guys.